The operators of Egypt's Suez Canal say technical or human error could have caused a huge container ship to run aground. Engineers are still working to refloat the Ever Given. The vessel has been blocking one of the world's busiest shipping lanes since Tuesday. How did the Ever Given, one of the biggest container ships ever built, end up blocking one of the world's busiest shipping lanes? And how long will it stay there? The chairman of the Suez Canal Authority is facing more questions than he can answer. But he says more than just strong winds caused the accident. An accident this big has several mistakes, several causes. Part of it could be a technical mistake, which is under investigation. There could also be a human error, which is also under investigation. There could be a lot of mistakes, but we can't say what they are now. The only factors we can be sure of now are the wind and the sandstorm. Those are not the only factors, like I said, but the rest will become clearer in the investigation. But while experts investigate further, the ship still has to be freed. 20,000 tons of sand have been removed from the area around the bow, and 9,000 tons of ballast water have been pumped out in order to lighten the vessel. The operation has so far been unsuccessful, but two more tugs are on their way. If they can't move it, the next step will be to unload the cargo. The issue of lightening the load is of course plan three, or the third scenario, which we hope not to reach. But if we need to, we will have ships with cranes, empty container ships with cranes that can remove the containers, one by one off the ship, and put them in the other vessel until we empty the whole load. The German insurance group Allianz says the blockage is costing the global economy between six and ten billion dollars a week. A tenth of the world's merchant shipping uses the canal. Well, for more on this, let's speak to Bill Kavanagh, who, who's basically currently in Cork, Ireland. He is a ship captain and also knows the Swiss Canal quite well, having passed through it a number of times. Well, earlier, sir, we knew that strong winds were being blamed for this ship blocking the canal. Now the Swiss Authority chairman is talking about technical or human error. What are the implications of this? Well, first of all, it's going to take a long time to investigate this incident. And it's not possible right now to uh, define exactly what the problem is. In all these critical incident cases in safety critical industries, it takes a long time to conduct the inquiry. And it is very rarely one single reason why an incident occurs. It is usually a number of incidents that occur in what we call an error chain. And eventually, th those incidents lead up, to, and those errors lead up to an incident. Uh, so it's very difficult at the moment to predict or to analyse exactly what happened. We do know some information. We know that the wind was strong. Um, we we know that the vessel was uh, steering somewhat erratically uh, prior to the incident. But uh, other than that, until they get the voyage data recorder and analyze the uh, technical parameters, it won't be possible to definitively say the reason for the incident. So, Captain Kavanagh, could you just explain the technicals around this? How difficult is it to navigate through the canal? For most vessels, it is not so difficult because it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's, it's, it's less than 200 kilometers in length. Um, it's pretty straight. The routes are very straight, north-south almost and the ships travel in convoys. What I would like to emphasize, however, is that in recent years, ships have got very large, very big. These are mega ships that carry 20,000 containers. And I believe that the technology to support these ships has not caught up with them. Therefore, tugs tend to be the same tugs they use in previous years. Procedures tend to be the older procedures. I believe we need, we need new precautions and new procedures to get these ships through safely. Most ships do get through safely, but they're not as big as these ships. And um, I think there's been about 75 incidents in the last decade, which is, is quite good. But nevertheless, ships do go aground, conventional ships. However, mega ships need additional precautions because of the high risk. And just very quickly, what would you say would be, uh, if you could give us maybe a bullet point, in terms of preventative measures that could be done to try and, you know, prevent a situation like this happening again? 
I think they have to conduct a risk analysis on a, regarding megaships compared to uh, traditional sized vessels. And one means would be to have tugs fast that is connected to the ships at all times throughout the passage. Uh, so they would have uh, the bow and the stern on tension. So if there's any deviation from the expected course, the tugs could at least assist in keeping them on course. Captain Bill Kavanagh, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on DW News. Thank you.